Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and this video is going to be for my playlist uh, Forensic Science and Genetics and I'm going to talk about what is electrophorogram and how to read it. And electrophorogram actually in this part of this picture uh, so we see a reference uh, line here with uh, uh, number of nucleotides uh, we see here reference um, ladder and we have uh, spikes here that represent these two molecules. Actually when we load uh, our capillary system we load not with two molecules but with millions of molecules uh, that is uh, copy of this molecule and millions of molecules that is copy of this molecule which we got uh, using PCR. So polymerase chain reaction and we load many many of uh, these two types of molecules but not only these two types of molecules because we have also here reference ladder that is made uh, the spikes made um, from the presence here of the molecule of the known sizes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in this example and we know that 1, 2, 3, 4 spikes are made by molecule that is smaller than this one. So let's add them to 1, 2, 3 and 4. We know that all of them the sizes are smaller than this one. So uh, this four molecules that we use as a reference uh, ladder are smaller than this one, smallest one. And also we have uh, another spike here and between these two spikes that made by these two uh, molecules uh, we have one, two more spikes here so we have to add uh, two more molecules that is going to be the size is going to be in between of these two and we also have two spikes made by molecules that is bigger than this molecule so let's add two more one and two so now, as you see, we have a reference ladder made by molecules of the known sizes. So, as you see, if we know uh, that we loaded uh, also molecules of the known sizes, now we can tell that uh, our spikes of the unknown molecules is between, say, a spike number 4 and 5. And we know the sizes of the molecules 4 and 5 so we instantly know that our uh, one of the molecules have to be somewhere in between 50 and 60 nucleotides and another one in between 70 and 80 nucleotides so what else should you know uh, as I said each line here represents one molecule but actually when we load uh, this capillary system we load with millions of copies of each molecule of each size now uh, let me draw another picture so now imagine that we have here this capillar and as you see according to this picture we have a laser beam here and detector which is a camera so let's let me draw a laser beam here and here is a camera and as I said um, all the molecules when they pass uh, this beam uh, they emit uh, a light of the certain uh, wave lens not the molecules uh, themselves but so let me draw molecules here. By the way, molecules are not lined up, but uh, rather 
would uh, make a certain clump of molecules and some of them, those of the same size, would go a little bit in front of the others and some of them would go behind, just very few of them. And most of them, as you see, uh, would be somewhere here in the middle. So when these molecules would pass this laser, laser would excite a certain fluorescent pigment that is attached to each uh, molecule here. And our camera here uh, would detect amount of light. So what we are going to get, we are going to get a picture like this. So no, absolutely no any uh, light emission, then a little bit that represent uh, this part of the clump where we just have a few molecules and then we have a spike where the most uh, amount of the uh, not reflected uh, light by it, uh, this uh, pigments uh, when excited by laser would uh, emit uh, photons of light of the certain wave plane and then we would see a picture like this. So uh, we would see a spike that represent basically uh, this clamp of molecules and uh, the maximum peak would uh, refer to the uh, maximum number of molecules that passing at the same time uh, this detection system that consists of laser and camera. And now we are ready to solve a problem. So here our problem. Examine the electrophorogram, describe uh, how to determine whether an individual is heterozygous or homozygous for particular STR. And STR stands for short and them repeat and uh, list the STR locus or loci at which this individual is homozygous. So now you know that each spike here is made by uh, different size molecules. So this person has two chromosomes number one, two chromosomes number two, two chromosomes number three. Because we are deployed, we have all our chromosomes uh, in two copies. And on the same uh, chromosome, uh, I mean uh, two homologous chromosomes, at the same locus, this person inherited from, say, mother side, uh, one number of repeats and from the uh, father side uh, from he chromosomes that he inherited from the father side different number of repeats that's why we have here two spikes the same picture here but at the locus d7 s820 we see one large spike this gives me information that this person is homozygous for this uh, locus some of you may think why uh, I'm so sure because maybe just a second um, chromosome at this particular place or locus just have a mutation and we just lost a second uh, a spike here due to mutation at the site where primers have to, to attach and make a copy. But actually as you see the size of this spike is much bigger than the rest. That give me information that if we use the same sample to extract all this um, uh, initial chromosome that we used for PCR, we have here a uh, much greater amount of initial um, chromosomes that we start to uh, make a copy for this uh, locus. And that means that actually on both chromosomes we have the same uh, size uh, alleles. That's why we have a spike here that is greater than in the other loci. And now you see this reference letter and 
here is the sizes of the uh, this alleles so each spike represent allele so normally we have uh, with uh, two alleles or same allele at the same locus so the answer for the first question would be uh, locus D 7 S 820 is homozygous and uh, the second question which locus has the longest DNA fragments how do you know and now if you would take a look you would see a uh, number of repeats here so these numbers just represent number of repeats but what is strange that uh, here in the middle we see a uh, number of repeats that is uh, for example greater than number of repeats here but as you know uh, the bigger molecules would move slower so this uh, locus probably have to be somewhere here why great number of repeats just got in the middle between 11 16 repeats and 9 repeats and all these repeats represent uh, tetranucleotide so 13 multiplied by 4 16 multiplied by 4 28 multiplied by 4 29 multiplied by 4 and 9 multiplied by 4 and you may think that uh, these two alleles uh, shouldn't be uh, present here but actually those uh, we uh, just uh, put number of repeats here these numbers doesn't represent the size of the molecule because this for example this allele and this one uh, may differ not just by a number of repeats of the core sequence but also by sequence of the flanking regions so those uh, this molecule has fewer number of repeats but may have uh, for example uh, greater or sorry uh, this one greater uh, flanking region that's why you see the size of this molecule about um, 260 and this molecule that has greater number of repeats as you see has a much smaller number of uh, uh, nucleotides and why uh, scientists did so because uh, we don't want all our uh, alleles of the different loci to be clumped in one uh, say place so imagine if we would put all these spikes in just one place we have to differentiate them so for example this fragment here belong to one locus this fragment belong to another locus this one and this one so now we know uh, and uh, alleles also can make uh, spikes here 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 because uh, different numbers are possible but uh, all the spikes we can find within certain area so all these areas are separated plus do not uh, forget that we use uh, different pigments uh, for many loci that is close to each other so we can differentiate them because some of the uh, sizes of the loci uh, would overlap but in these cases we would use different pigments for example green uh, pigment here and red pigment here even if they would overlap we still can differentiate them so the answer for the last uh, question would be uh, the longest uh, number of nucleotides uh, we have for the locus C S F one P O those once again 
number of repeats here 11 and 12 which is smaller than this um, numbers here which also represent number of repeats but this number is much smaller than uh, this number or range of these numbers and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have any share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video goodbye